on the south side of South Bass Island, away from the bustling downtown at Putten Bay. I found an active crowd soaking up the sun and having a unique water recreational experience. We're here for the Mammoth Paddleboard. <laughs> and it lived up to the name. I was standing next to it earlier and I was like, good Lord. It's I mean, crazy. this is ginormous. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, that seems like a big draw for you guys around here. It really is. The um, jet skis and power boats and kayaks and single paddle boards are all really popular. But boy, oh boy, when we put that mammoth in service, it could fit a whole family on there. So we're getting a lot of business from that. Yeah, we saw a couple of smiling families going out there earlier today. If a group of friends want to get it, they can do it as well. We just got the first one a couple years ago um, because we'd seen a large one that was 15 foot long. And then I was doing some research on it. And I found out there was an 18 foot long one being manufactured in England. England. So got it here and it proved to be immensely popular. Yeah. So we moved that one over to Kelly's and we got two more for here. Do you love more of this relaxed feel? Without a okay. doubt, without a doubt, Tim. Downtown is pretty crazy, but we're just one street away. If you just start at the boardwalk and you head out this way and stop before you, your feet are wet, then you'll be at our location. It's beautiful down here. The location and the view is just- You can't beat it. Unparalleled. Absolutely. Yeah. Just down the road, Adventure awaited 52 feet underground as I took a tour of Perry's Cave. Discovered in 1813 by Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry, the cave is a cool break from the hot summer sun. Across the street, Heinemann's Winery is home to the one-of-a-kind Crystal Cave. We're going 40 feet below the Earth's surface. We feature celestite crystals. It's a light baby blue colored crystal and it's on the walls, ceiling. Uh, the mineral that makes it up is called strontium sulfate, and it forms similar to rock candy, but with rock candy, the water drips away and the sugar crystals are what remains. Yeah. With these, the water drips away and that strontium sulfate wants to take up as much space as possible and it'll branch out and form these geometric shapes. We actually can't even really touch the crystals because oh. the oils on our fingers permanently damage their So I color. shouldn't be touching them. Right, right. But I'm sorry. No, it's okay. When they first started giving the tours, they uh, invited people to touch I them. I can see some are different yeah. colors, yeah, so. Discovered accidentally in 1897, that's about 10 years after our winery was established when two of our workers were trying to dig that well, we hypothesized that the glacial scrapes that you might see on Kelly's Island, yeah. those are a great example of the fact that the glaciers form the Great Lakes. Um, so therefore the glaciers might have had a large amount of that strontium sulfate in it. So once those glaciers melted, formed the Great Lakes, and the water finally seeped down through, that strontium would have been dripped away and branched out and formed these geometric shapes you see. Yeah, they even look like glaciers, like the <laughs> yeah, shape a little bit. of them. That's really cool. One Tank Travel with Tim McMahon is presented by Shores and Islands, Ohio.